So today we will start uh, module 7 and uh, in this week the focus will be on using the power series method for solving second order differential equations. So in the in the in, in this week there will be five five lectures. The first one I'll I'll introduce the power series method. I'll use the example of the Legendre differential equation. Then uh, we'll solve the Legendre equation using the power series method and and uh, look at the properties of what are called Legendre polynomials. After that, I'll talk about associated Legendre polynomials and how these are collected to spherical harmonics. Okay. Uh, uh, which is which is a problem that you encounter in quantum chemistry, and then uh, I'll take another problem that you encounter in quantum chemistry, which is the quantum harmonic oscillator, and how you use Hermite polynomials to solve this. Okay, and then we'll finish with some practice problems. Okay, so so this will be the content of uh, module seven. So let's start with the power series method for solving uh, ordinary differential equations. Now, uh, what does a power series method do? It gives you the general solution of a homogeneous second order ODE. So, a typical homogeneous second order ODE is written in this form. So, y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to 0. So, so the general solution has this form y is equal to some constant arbitrary constant times y1 which is one one of the solutions plus some arbitrary constant times y2. So, this is the general form of the solution and the power series method will show you how you can get this general solution of the homogeneous of a homogeneous second order difference ODE. And uh, I should mention that uh, though we are talking about homogeneous second order ODEs this method can also be extended to non-homogeneous ODEs and also to higher order ODEs. Okay? But uh, at least, at least uh, as far as this course is concerned, we will look at second order homogeneous ODEs. Okay. So, the example that I will that I'll use to illustrate this, okay, this is one example, it is not a, they can, you can take many different examples. Okay? So, this is one example that we are using and this is called the Legendre differential equation. So, this is a differential equation, I will write the differential equation and uh, we will solve it using the power series method. So, the differential equation is 1 minus x square y double prime minus 2 x y prime plus n or, or I will use, I will use alpha here instead of n. alpha alpha plus 1 y equal to 0. So, this is the Legendre differential equation okay? and uh, later on we will be interested in integer values of alpha. Okay? Later on we will look at integer values of alpha, but right now this is the form of the Legendre differential equation. Okay? So, uh, so, so I will just mention that alpha being an integer, okay? this is there are several physical problems. Okay, so, it is this is a form of solution of several physical problems. So, one of them we will see later on which is the which is what is called spherical harmonics, okay, which is related to uh, related to the solution of the rigid rotor in quantum mechanics. So, spherical harmonics and uh, this is 3D rigid rotor. Uh, this is in quantum mechanics. So, the quantum mechanical 3D rigid rotor is what uh, will be solved using this Legendre polynomials. Okay. Also, I should mention that this, uh, this solution of this Legendre differential equation, which uh, leads to some, something called Legendre polynomials, these are also very important in uh, general basis expansions 
of angular functions. And uh, I am just writing this for now, okay. uh, we will see later on how, how this is done. But the basic idea is that if you have a system where, where uh, you have an angular variable okay, and uh, usually the angular variable has certain range of values let us say 0 to pi or 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Then uh, these Legendre, these solutions of the Legendre differential equation, these are very useful to to get to as as a, as a basis for uh, for for various problems with with angular functions. Okay. So now now what is the method of the power series method? Uh, so what are the steps in the power series method? And uh, keep in mind that uh, we want to solve the Legendre differential equation. So so I'll just list the various steps. So the first step. Okay, so I'll write I'll write the equation again, one minus x square equal to zero. Okay, so the steps are. So the first one, is use a trial solution. Okay, so you try a solution of the form, y is equal to sum over n equal to 0 to infinity c n x raised to n. So, c n is a coefficient and you have x to the nth power. So, so basically this, this is called a power series. So, this looks like c 0 plus c 1 x plus c 2 x square plus so on it goes up to infinity. Okay, so, this is a trial solution and the basic idea of the method is to use this as a trial solution in the differential equation. Okay. So, so if you use this as a trial solution, then you can immediately write y prime is equal to. Okay. Now, uh, what you can do is you can you will have a sum of z, n equal to 0 to infinity and then you have to take a derivative term by term derivative. If you take a derivative c n is a constant. So, you will c n will be left as it is derivative of x raised to n is n times x raised to n minus 1. Okay. Now, when you do this. Uh, you will notice that the n equal to 0 term is actually 0. Okay. So, this actually starts from this sum even though you can write it from 0 to infinity the n equal to 0 term is 0. So, you can also write this as 1 to infinity c n n x raised to n minus 1. Okay. So, this is the this is the derivative and then you can write the second derivative similarly and this will be sum over n equal to 0 to infinity. Now, you have c n n n minus 1 x raised to n minus 2 and again now in this case the n equal to 0 term is 0 n equal to 1 term is also 0. Okay. So, actually you can write this sum as starting from n equal to 2 to infinity okay. and uh, if you look at the form of y, y has this form. Okay. And now, when you take the derivative obviously, the constant term will give you 0 derivative. So, therefore, therefore you would not have a constant term. So, the c 0 term n equal to 0 term will not contribute to the derivative. When you take a second derivative both these the first two terms will actually go out they would not contribute to the derivative. So, therefore, the derivative contribution start from c 2 onwards. Okay. So, now once you have this trial form okay, we substitute in the differential equation and uh, when you substitute this in the differential equation, what will happen is you will have. Uh, so, I will write each term, I will write this as two terms. So, the 1 minus x square, I will write each of the term multiplies y double prime. So, the first term is just y double prime. So, that I will write as sum over n equal to 0 to infinity c n n n minus 1 x raised to n minus 2. The second term is minus x square y double prime. So, now if I multiply this by minus x square, so I have a minus and I have sum over n equal to 0 to infinity. Now I have c n n n minus 1. Now I have x raised to n, okay. x square into x raised to n minus 2 is x raised to n. Okay. So, that is what you will get from the first term on the left. The second term the minus 2 x y you can see that it gives you minus sum over n equal to 0 to infinity. Now you have a 2 and you have n x raised to n. Okay, so, that is the that is what you get from this minus 2 x y minus 2 x y prime minus 2 x y prime gives you that. Okay. Now, the next so, so and the last term will give me plus sum over n equal to 0 to infinity alpha alpha plus 1 
no I missed a C N here, this should be a, there should be a C N x raised to n okay and alpha alpha plus 1 now now you just have y y is just uh, c n x raised to n equal to 0 okay so you can verify that uh, these are the terms that you'll get when you substitute uh, this form of y in the in the differential equation okay now uh, what can you do with this so this is a polynomial in x so so what you have this whole left hand side is a polynomial in x in x and the right hand side is 0. So, if a polynomial in x is 0 then each power of x should go to 0 ok. So, each power of x on the left hand side should equal 0. So, uh, this I will say is the second step. So, the second step was to substitute ok. Now, the third step in this in this method is to set each power of x to 0 ok. So, so for example, if you take if you look at the power of x raised to 0, so it is a polynomial. So, the the constant or x raised to 0 term ok. So, how can you get an x raised to 0? So, in the first term here ok, in this term you can get an x raised to 0 if n equal to 2 ok. So, if n equal to 2 then you will get uh, something that looks like c 2 and then you have 2 into 2 minus 1, 2 into 1. So, that is 2. So, you have 2 c 2 ok and then you have x raised to 0 ok. Then here in this case you will get x raised to power 0 if n equal to 0. So, so in the second term in this term you should have n equal to 0. So, that will give me so minus c 0 ok. Now, if n equal to 0 then actually actually n equal to 0 this this becomes 0. So, you have into 0 ok. This will actually not contribute the contribution will be 0. Similarly, here also you, you have to have x raised to 0 in the third term ok. In the third term x raised to 0 comes from n equal to 0 ok and again again that will also contribute 0. So, you will have minus c 0 into 0. In the fourth term fourth term you will have x raised to 0 contribution from n equal to 0 ok. So, so when n equal to 0 you will have c 0 alpha alpha plus 1. So, you have plus c 0 alpha alpha plus 1 equal to 0 ok. So, so what we did is we equated the coefficient of x raised to power 0 to 0. Uh, it gives you the a very nice relation it gives you c 2 equal to minus c 0 alpha alpha plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so, this is a relation between C 2 and C 0 ok. Now, next uh, we can set the power of x raised to 1 to 0. So, what is the coefficient of x raised to 1? So, if you want to have x raised to 1 then here n has to be equal to 3. So, so you will have a 3 into 2 that is 6 C 3 ok from this term. Here if you have to have x raised to 1 ok then they, then n has to be equal to 1, but if n equal to 1 then uh, you have n into n minus 1. So, this is the second term. So, the second term will again be 0 ok and I would not write it this time. In the third term you can have uh, n equal to 1 ok. So, if n equal to 1 then you will get uh, minus 2 into 1 into c 1 ok. So, minus 2 c 1 and then again in the last term you can have n equal to 1 and in this case you will get uh, plus alpha alpha plus 1 c 1 ok. This is the coefficient of x to the power 1 and this has to be equal to 0. So, what that gives you is that you you will get the relation c 3 equal to equal to. So, now uh, I will write it in this form I will write it as minus c 1 times alpha alpha plus 1 minus 2 divided by 6. So, C 3 is related to C 1. So, C 3 is proportional to C 1, C 2 is was proportional to C 0 ok. Now, uh, you can go on you can do this and uh, let me do it right here. Let me now look at the coefficient of coefficient of of x raised to power 
n okay x raised to power n so if you have to have an a power of x raised to n then uh, i'll show it in green so in this term you should have n n equal to n plus 2 okay so what you'll get the term that had that has a power of x raised to n will actually contain c n plus 2 into now uh, you have n plus 2 into n plus 2 minus 1 so n plus 2 into n plus 1 this is the coefficient of x to the power n okay the second term will have uh, x to the power n so so we'll have c n n n minus 1 the third term you'll have minus 2 n c n and the fourth term you'll have plus alpha alpha plus 1 c n this equal to 0. Okay, so, this is what you get from the coefficient of x raised to n and uh, you can rewrite this. I okay, will uh, I'll let you work it out, So, but I will just write the final result. So, you have c n plus 2 is equal to okay, and I will write it in, uh, in minus c n times alpha alpha plus 1 minus n n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 n plus 2. Okay, so, this is this is what you will get. What you will get is that c n plus 2 is related only to c n. Okay. So, now, now uh, the fourth step is to analyze. Okay, so, what do we mean by analyze? So, what we notice is that uh, from c 0, okay, you can calculate c 2. c 2 you can express in terms of c 0 and uh, c 4 can be expressed in terms of in terms of c 2. So, you can write c 4 in terms of c 2 uh, using this general relation that we have and uh, you can write c 6 in terms of c 4, c 4 in terms of c 2, c 2 in terms of c 0. So, in and similarly you can go other side. So, you can write c 7 in from c 5, you can write c 5 from c 3, you can write c 3 from c 1. Okay. So, what this means is that any these are the even terms, even uh, even powers of x. These are odd. These are terms. These are coefficients of odd powers of x. Okay. So so you can write a coefficient of any even power of x in terms of c zero. So basically, you can write uh, you can write my uh, you can say that all even power coefficients. are proportional to c 0. Okay. Now, this is again very specific for the Legendre differential equation. It is not generally true. In this particular case, you found that all even power coefficients are proportional to c 0 and you also find that you can similarly see that all odd power coefficients are proportional to c 1. Okay. So, so basically what you can say is that uh, I can write y, okay, I can collect all the even power coefficients okay, and they will, so what I will get is c 0 times sum of even power terms plus c 1 times sum of odd power terms. Okay. So, I can write my solution in this form. So, all I did was I took my original trial solution which has uh, which has this form c n x raise to n. So, so what I did is I take this c n x raise to n and uh, what I see is that all the all the even terms c 0, c 2, c 4 etcetera they, they are all proportional to c 0. So, I collect them together. Similarly, all the odd terms c 1, c 3 etcetera they are proportional to c 1. So, I collect those together and I can write it in this form. Okay, now, this is a very nice form because uh, you can think of these as basis solutions. So, this and this I can think of as basis solutions and then what you have is you can you, you have the form y equal to c 0 times uh, uh, y 1 plus c 2 uh, c 1 times y 2. So, so, you are writing a general solution 
okay, with these two basis solutions and so uh, C0 and C1 are arbitrary, so, so this looks like a general solution. Okay. So, this is the crux of the power series method and this is how you find a general solution of a differential equation. Okay. Now, uh, what we will do is we will just analyze this a little more. Okay. So, so uh, in terms of the method, this is how you use the power series method and uh, C0 and C1 are two arbitrary constants and essentially you are done. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will just look at the properties of these general solutions. Okay. And uh, this is where we will come across something called Legendre polynomials. Okay. In order to motivate them, what I will see is that in this sum of even terms, even power terms and sum of odd power terms, so the number of terms in each sum in general equal to infinity. So, in general, so in general this there are infinite many terms in each of these, okay, because, because the series keeps on going. Okay. Now, uh, however, if alpha is an integer, is a let us say positive integer, okay. So, if alpha is a positive integer, then we notice that C of alpha plus 2, okay. So, if you look at C of alpha plus 2, so I can write this as minus C alpha times alpha alpha plus 1 and then I had minus n n plus 1 which is nothing but alpha alpha plus 1 divided by alpha plus 1 alpha plus 2 and this is equal to 0. Okay, C of alpha plus 2 equal to 0 and uh, what you notice is that uh, is that uh, let us just go back to our to our relation by, by the way I did not mention this, but this is called a recursion relation. Okay, so, the recursion relation relates uh, C n to C n plus 2, there are many other kinds of recursion relation, but this is one form of the recursion relation that you always encounter whenever you are doing the power series method. Okay, so, what happens is that when alpha equal to n, when n is equal to alpha, okay, then the numerator goes to 0 in the recursion relation and so, and so you get 0 and uh, what does this mean? This means that also C of alpha plus 4 equal to C of alpha plus 6 equal to C of alpha plus 8, all of them is equal to 0. Okay. So, all those any any term that is uh, of the same parity as alpha, okay, but has a value greater than alpha. So, like alpha plus 2, alpha plus 4, alpha plus 6, all of them, all those terms go to 0. So, that means, if alpha is a positive integer, then one of the two series converges to a polynomial, to a polynomial that means a polynomial of finite degree. And this polynomial of finite degree is referred to as the Legendre polynomial. Okay. So, what is the Legendre polynomial? The symbol used is P n of x. Okay. So, P n is the, is the symbol for the Legendre polynomial. Okay. n is the degree of the polynomial. So, so, so that means your P n Legendre polynomial uh, P n is a solution of the differential equation 1 minus x square y double prime minus 2 x y prime plus n n plus 1 y equal to 0. So, the solution of this differential equation, okay, so it is it is one solution. So, Legendre polynomial is one solution of above ODE. Okay, so, it is one of the solutions. Okay, see, so, the other solution will be an infinite series. Okay, so, if you look at your sum of even powers, so you have these two basis solutions, sum of odd powers. Now, one of them, if alpha is even, then this term, then the sum of even powers will go to 0 at when n is equal to alpha. 
if it if alpha is odd then the sum of odd power terms will go to 0 beyond some alpha. So, so one of these will become a polynomial and that polynomial is called the Legendre polynomial. So, so what can you say about Legendre polynomial? So, uh, I will just mention this. So, it is a polynomial of degree n containing only terms that have same parity as n. So, what, what I mean is that uh, is that uh, it contains only odd or even or even terms ok. So, for example, if you have n even Okay, then uh, P n will have terms that, that contain x to the power 0, x to the power 2, x power 4 and so on up to x power n. Okay. If n is odd, okay, then, then the P n will contain terms that look like uh, will have terms of x power 1, x power 3, x power 5 and so on up to x power n. Okay. So, so, so it will be a polynomial that contains only one type of terms. Okay. So, uh, in the next class, we look at uh, some of the properties of these polynomials, we look at what, what the forms of these polynomials are and we will we'll investigate some of their properties. Okay. Thank you.